please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Batman Begins, Movie Thoughts. I rather like the twist of, you know, the League of Shadows returning and Henry Ducard being the real Ross uncle. Yes, the real one, not just the one who takes over. Google the script, it's, it's there. Or, you know, check IMDb. <laughs> not that they're always entirely credible. Anyway, and him playing you know, suddenly a villain is really effective. You know, you you think of him as just the, the mentor, and he is very much that here as well, but when he suddenly, you know, turns out to be evil, it's, it's really quite effective. You, you really fear him, and I think they picked a pretty good, you know, initial villain for Batman. It, it does make sense as a you know, who, who can be his equal, because that's what you really want in a good superhero movie, or a good superhero story in general. You want them to face off against someone who is interesting for them to face off against, someone that they could actually be defeated by. I don't know much about Ross in the comics, but I understand that what they do with him in the movie is fairly similar to what they do in the comics. He is sort of, you know, the many must be sacrificed for the good of, or, well, the many, the, the relative few must be sacrificed for the good of the many. You know, if, if it means that, you know, an entire city has to be, you know, destroyed for the good of sort of the planet. I, I understand he's like more of an environmentalist in the comics, which, you know, doesn't particularly come from the movie, but, you know, they do have the aspect that he is willing to kill a lot, and he is driven by this idea, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and basically he feels like he's looking out for, you know, it, it's all gonna work out in the end if we just make sure that these people here, who are right now, you know, clearly corrupt, they have to go, and then, you know, every so often we have to go in and just completely clean out because, and, and like, and they, he talks about Rome and Constantinople and, you know, stuff. Well, I suppose that was the double. I, I did like how they actually picked someone, you know, a, a name for the, the role of the double so you'd actually believe that that was the real Ross, you know. If I could just remember his name, that would be awesome. But you know, we all know him, the old John Woo favorite, and quite the action star in his own right. Chow Yun Fat, I believe that's him. And you know the 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 sort of you know the, the way that suddenly it's it's the poison. The poison gas is just on a much larger scale. It's you know supposed to hit all of Gotham, and we have an excellent ticking clock. You know, we a, a good big movie needs ticking clock, uh, ticking clocks at least one, and this has a few. You know, you have the burning house where they have to run away from the big fireball, and you know just get into the elevator just to, to be safe. You know, and then you have you know, stuff like, yeah, yeah, the, the subway car at the end, you know, which really works well. With, every time it passes, you see the, the manhole covers being blown up as the, you know, the, the water comes up as steam, you know, really effective, you know, it really builds the tension, really tells us, you know, 
the excrement will hit the air conditioner if the you know if if the subway train gets all the way to Wayne Tower. You know, you even have that that old guy with oh if if that gets here it's gonna blow. No, we have to evacuate the building. You know, he, he has like three little shots where he gets to you know emote. It's, it's fun. And it's it's of course it's a great kind of you know, to, to have the, the, the teacher return as a sort of, you know, that, that's the one person who could really challenge Batman at this point, is the one who taught Batman all he knows. You know, how, how could he fight that? And, you know, their, their yeah, their, their fight is quite exciting as well. And the and, and I like how you know the, the car I really like how they actually do a payoff to I gotta get me one of those you know when, when Gordon sees the car drive by on that that first night that he really uses the car the Batmobile he's like I gotta get me one of those and then a few scenes later he has one you know he's driving up there shooting the what's it called yeah sh shooting down the so so the subway car will go over and you know Batman is all like I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you. You never did learn to mind your surroundings. You know, I love the way this uses lines repeat back to the people who originally said them and stuff like that. How, you know, they keep using the one about mind your surroundings. You know, the manner, you never could learn to mind your surroundings. You know, the, the pillar gets knocked down on him, it's on fire, you know. And then you have the thing about, you know, the payoff to the, the what's it called? Push-ups. You know, what's, what good are they if you can't lift it off? And he lifts it off. Anyway, you know, before that, he has, you know, you have to mind your surroundings, you're on the ice, and, you know, I, I can break the ice you're standing on, you know, stuff like that. I really like how he uses the ice also. At first he's like, oh crap, how do I stay still on this while fighting? And then suddenly, you know, after he loses his sword, he uses the ice, he slides across it really fast and grabs the, the blade, you know, really smart thinking, you know, turning his disadvantage into an advantage, you know. You don't, you don't fight, that, that's, that's the way you win, you know, you don't fight your situation, you use your situation. You know, you figure out a way to use the situation you're in against someone else instead of them using it against you. There are always, you know, at least in theory, and there are always ways to turn the situation around to your favor. I really like the whole, <laughs> especially if you call it daddy issues, the, the whole thing of, you know, he, he looks up to his father who wanted to help people, who was very idealist. And he has the, you know, and, and then he meets this other, this opposing view, sort, sort of, in Henry Ducard, or the Wheel of Ross. And, yeah, the, there is this discussion between those two points of view. Do you, do you help people up? Or do you, you know, do you wait until it gets to a certain level and then cut it off? You know, it. And and there is there is logic in what he says to to quote that. Anyway, th there is a certain amount of logic in what the league are doing, but you know there there are sort of the. The one big clue, and I think this was very intentional, you know, it, it's that thing they say about, you know, it's, it's the will to act. It is not asking questions. It is not saying, am I doing what's right? It's acting on what you believe in. And that's something very, you know, that, that right there is basically the, the downfall of a lot of, that, that's where a lot of people go wrong and a lot of ideologies, belief systems go wrong. It, you know, when you unquestionably follow something, 
no matter how good the intentions are, it you know it's it's very likely that it'll lead to horrible things being done in the name of what's good and right, and that's exactly what's happening here. They they genuinely do want you know what's best, but they don't think that you can help things. You know if if. I don't remember Bruce's father's name, but if his father hadn't tried to help people, hadn't spent so much money fighting poverty, you know, that, that was what, the, you know, Roz reveals that they caused the depression that had struck Gotham, you know. So, it's not that, you know, which, in these days, you really wish you could put, just uh, completely put a face on and just say, that's the guy who, you know, I'm gonna leave him in, a, him in a subway train that's going to crash and explode, you know. But, yeah, it's it's because of Bruce's father's efforts to help the situation, to help the people suffering, you know, the, the people who are poverty-stricken. That's why it doesn't sort of work out, you know, without them having to use this really elaborate plan with a microwave emitter and everything, you know. I really do wonder how exactly... Ah, never mind. Anyway, the... You know, it, it is this... They, they want what's best, but they... They think that you have to be sort of draconian about it, or they, they think that you, you know, it's... I really don't want to Godwin's this video, but it is just, it, it is kind of Nazi-ish. The, the, the moment that he said, I, I, again, I hadn't watched this in a while, and I kind of forgotten a lot of things about it, but the moment, the first time Henry Ducard said, it's about will, the will to act, the very first thing that came to mind was, I'm not going to try to pronounce it in German because I'll butcher it terribly, but I think in English it's called Triumph of the Will. The Leni Riefenstahl Nazi propaganda film, you know, it, which very much was this thing of, you know, Nazi Germany very much, ah, it's about will, you know, you just have to want to do, you know, and it's very much Republican Party. Today, it's, it, I don't want to turn this political, but yeah, it is this thing of, if you just, if you're just willing to do, then everything will work out, you know, that's, that's all you need is to, the, the will to act, and that's often just not true. If, if you're just acting, if you're not thinking about what you're doing, if you're just doing, over and over, then, you know, yeah, you, you might not realize that what you're doing is horribly wrong. And that's really what you, you see in, you know, in Ross. He, he is very misguided. He genuinely wants to help people, and he honestly thinks that the best way is to, you know, to sacrifice all these people for the greater good, you know. And... That's, and, and that very much helped define, finally I got to my point, Batman and Bruce Wayne. It sort of says, this is a line that I will not cross. I will not kill in order to, like, like he said, I will not become an executioner. I'm willing to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to fight criminals, but I will not kill in order to, to help people. You know, there, there is that little bit of idealism left you know, in spite of the last lines of Rachel Dalton in the film. You know, by the way, I, I really love how this ends on just a big-ass teaser for The Dark Knight. It's just, you know, he leaves a calling card, and flips him, this is the Joker, and everyone knows, the moment he says calling card, everyone knows it's going to be a playing card, and it's going to be a Joker. And, you know, everyone was psyched, and everyone was right about being psyched. But anyway, yeah, you know, there is this little hint of idealism left in 
Bruce Wayne and in Batman, you know, and, and that's also, that's sort of what keeps him, that's, that's also what he says, you know, that's what separates us from them, you know, compassion and, and to actually understand, to realize that they are not bad people, they, they have to be stopped because they're doing bad things, but they are not bad people, because if you, you know, if, if you lose all faith in people, then how do you manage to get up in the morning when all you're doing is trying to help people? If you have no faith, that if you don't think they deserve help, then how can you go through this, you know, helping people? And it would also just, it would turn Batman into something much darker. It, it would, you know, be, be very disturbing. It, it, it would be some, someone like the Punisher or something, you know, some, someone who just goes out and punishes, someone who just kills and destroys. You know, don't get me wrong, I love the Punisher, but, you know. I quite like how this fits in the, you know, these various aspects. You know, you, you have the double life. You know, so suddenly he's, you know, the, you know, Alfred tells him, you know, you, you really have to, the people are going to wonder, what is Bruce Wayne spending his, his time and his money on? You know, so you have to go out and pretend you're just a, a rich jerk, you know. By the way, I, I know it's a minor thing, and I probably wouldn't even have caught it if it wasn't for the subtitles. I always watch movies with subtitles. I'm dating Sumi. It just, there's, <laughs> when he has this big speech, I love how he pretends to be drunk, by the way. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's just completely, yeah, that's Bruce Wayne trying to be drunk, that's not Christian Bale acting, you know, that's, yeah. You know, he has this big speech, getting all the people out so that, you know, the lead can't hurt him, hurt them, and one of the women is like, he's becoming such an insufferable jerk. Is, I, I love that line, that's just, wow. Anyway, yeah, you know, he... Alfred is all like, you have to become a rich jerk, and then he goes out with those two very nice looking young ladies, and, you know, buys the hotel and changes the pool policy and all this stuff, you know, and then he meets Rachel, and it's like, oh, I really didn't want this to be the first time I met you after I came back after years of being gone, you know, and he's like, this isn't me. And, you know, one of the yells, hey, we have some more hotels for you to buy. And she's like Swedish or something, a Swedish model, you know. And, you know, and then she says, you know, it's, then she does one of the Katie Holmes moments of, you know, it's not what you, it's not what you are underneath, but what you do that defines you, you know. And then he goes and does, you know. And there's that other thing where she's talking about, I have to go see Dr. Crane. And then he's like, ah, I must save her, you know. I really do like how she, you know, in the Narrows, she saves herself and that kid, you know, she actually, you know, the scarecrow is all on them and the kid is, you know, hallucinating, seeing flames coming out of the horse's nostrils and the scarecrow is like, ah, ha, ha, and she just zaps him right in the face. Man, that's got to hurt. You know, and, and the horse rides off with him on it, you know. He doesn't ride off on the horse, the horse rides off with him. He's just, like, gone, you know. And I, I think that that part of the plan also made sense to start the attack in the Narrows after getting all the, you know. They release the inmates so that every police officer gets, you know, and all the SWAT teams, Ryan comes, everyone gets into the Narrows to try to you know, find and stop all these escaped inmates. And then they release the gas on all of them so that, yeah, they're completely... It was really disturbing when all of the people from the Narrows were, like, grabbing a Batman and clawing at his face. Man, that's horrifying. Chris Nolan, you... <laughs> he really knows how to just get under our skin and just really mess with us. You know, I really love the sort of demonic, the, the hallucination that Scarecrow has of what Batman looks like. You know, when he's like, oh, what about a taste of your own medicine? And he, 
you know, and he just sees him as this, you know, black-skinned, drooling sort of beast. Really cool. You know, it actually fits with the voice surprisingly well. The... <laughs> I like the, the thing about, who cares if, you know, if, if we, you know, about the drugs. We'll never be able to tie Falcone to this, um, sir, and he's literally tied to it, you know, he's tied to that thing. I couldn't find any mob bosses to string up the, the enemy, brilliant. The... I also quite like how the ending, you know, in addition to setting up the Dark Knight, it's, you know, we, we have this sort of, now Batman's a thing, he actually, he exists, you know, over the course of the film we see how the legend becomes more real, you know, you have a couple of goons going, I heard he can fly, is it true that he, you know, and then there at the end, Batman is, he's real, you know, Gotham knows Batman is there to protect them, you know, and we have... You know, he's got the bat signal, Gordon sets that up for him, and then Gordon is like, you know, things aren't over yet. We, we still have caught all those inmates, you know, Crane's still out there, and you have, you know, and, yeah, and, and then he starts talking about escalation. And, yeah, it's, it's just brilliant, because that really is how you want to end this sort of thing, you know, especially for the first film to sort of say this is this is going to be a franchise, this is this is not the end of this, and also just this very dark and gritty kind of thing, Batman is not the sort of fix-all, Batman is necessary, but he does not catch everything, and just because he's there doesn't mean that there aren't bad guys who can challenge him. You know, that is, it's very important to establish that, you know. I really like how they did Scarecrow, you know, no, like, yeah, nothing that you couldn't explain, you know, it's basically, he has this mask, I love just when he introduces it, it's just the first time you see it, it's Killian Murphy, he freaking sells it. You know, the first time you see the movie and you hear the line, Would you like to see my mask? You're like, WGF, what the, what? And he just, you know, puts it on and the gas and then, you know, suddenly you get it. You're like, of course. You know, and, and Carmine has just been sitting there threatening him, you know, you know, I, I have dirt on you. I, that's how I do business, you know. I, I don't go into business with someone without having, you know, something dirt, some dirt on them. And... You know, Scarecrow's like, I know that, you know, Roz is not going to want you on, so this is what we're going to do, you know, this, is, and, and he already has the thing ready for it, and, you know, also the thing of, you know, just a few lines before, I think, it was the, yeah, yeah, you know, Carmine actually threatens him with, I know that you do experiments in the, you know, at Arkham Asylum, and that's how he developed the, well, no, I mean, that's not how he developed the toxin, but, well, maybe he, maybe he concentrated it through those trials, anyway. I think the, the overall plan somewhat makes sense with the, you know, they, they got it into the, you know, they, they, get it into the city by smuggling it, smuggling it in as, as if it was just a regular drug and with all these other drugs, you know, over all these, I don't remember, I think they actually specified a number of months and they're dumping all this stuff directly into the water supply so all of the water is completely contaminated and it's okay until it gets turned into steam which is why they need the microwave in their thing. And the you do have to wonder why they couldn't just like use a plane dropping you know this this airborne toxin from the blue flower again you know really set up and pay off on that you know to actually just 
why they need to incorporate the, you know, it's easier for Batman to stop it through the subway train, and that's why it was written into the script, but why Roz makes that decision, especially when he knows that Batman is there, you kind of have to wonder. The... I also quite like how the things on, you know, Batman's arms there actually come from you know, the League of Shadows, that that's just what they use to block swords and such, you know. I don't know if it's supposed to be that just Roz sees it that way, but when he confronts, yeah, when he leaves Bruce to die, he's like, you left me for dead. No, he didn't. He saved your life. And then he made sure you got to a place where you, you know, you'd actually be safe. Or was he talking about the real Roz, the, not the real, the, the double Roz? I don't know. But, yeah. It might just be sort of his warped logic that, excuse me, that he is, excuse me, he's, he's rationalizing. Because he's sure he's right. And that is very, very true to, you know, that, that's quite true of the, that kind of, person of the kind of person that doesn't question that just does you're in my way sir <laughs> sorry spoony so yeah you have to go and yeah i'm just gonna rationalize that because it's what i have to do and i have the will to do it i don't have the philosophy to question what i'm doing you know felt more sort of important and and you know he he felt like a bigger part of Bruce's life in this than in any of the other films he really felt like he was he was there for Bruce and he was this surrogate father he was the one who raised him for all those years you know I have to talk a little bit about Bruce's journey I love how you know when he, when he gets the chance to kill Chill, I think that's what he's called, you know, the guy who killed the, his parents, you know. I also think it's a quite good scene of, you know, the, the parents getting killed, you know, how it just sort of gradually escalates, just a little, you know, with just money, okay, yo, here, here you go, and oh, it's okay. And you know, picks it up, Andrew, and you know, and and you have this thing of oh, he just gave her those jewels, and he was really happy about giving her those jewels, and then it goes wrong, you know, and yeah, just the whole thing. Anyway, the yeah, he Bruce is actually going to try to kill the guy who killed his parents. You know, he just wants straight up revenge. And the reason he doesn't get it is because Carmine Falcone sent a guy so that he wouldn't get, you know, caught himself. B because, you know, Chill was going to provide information about Carmine. You know, that this whole thing just... And, and Rachel's disappointment in him, that the, the slaps... It's right for the character, but it's just, it's, it's why they should maybe not have cast Katie Holmes, because the, the role did require her to have this sort of maturity, I guess, this sort of, it, it's just that she, she is someone who, she, you know, she grew up with him, it's not that she's old enough, she should just have this sort of, you know, yeah, the, the gravitas that she just doesn't quite have to, it, it just feels, like I said in the review, like a child throwing a tantrum trying to or something. But anyway, it's, you know, and, and she talks about, you know, revenge is making, is about making yourself feel good, whereas justice is about equality and making sure that, that it all balances out, you know. And I really like Bruce's musings on 
having been with criminals and having been, have, you know, gaining sympathy for stealing to survive, you know, and yeah, this these sort of things where you know, and also chill talking about. You know, and he's even, it, it's a great character because, you know, you go from, you, you hate him when he's killing the parents, but when you see him, you do fairly believe that he's become sort of, you know, he's basically rehabilitated. And he's not like, you know, I'm, I'm all better now. He's like, oh, what I did was horrible. I wish I could take it back. And... I was desperate, yes, a lot of people were, but that still doesn't make it right what I did, you know, it just really, and, and that also is an important aspect of sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of he crossed the line, you know, you, it's, it's okay to steal to feed yourself, but it's not okay to kill someone, you know, even though you're desperate. It, again, so, sort of setting up this sort of moral code for it, really works and but but yes so we have that's sort of where he starts that's what adult Bruce the first time we see adult Bruce the, the, the earliest time not not chronologically in the film but chronologically in the actual events that the film depicts we we meet him when he is willing to kill another man for killing his parents and at the end of the film well you know, he lets Henry die but other than that he is you know, he, he will not kill someone else. He will, you know, fight to save people from dying. You know, I mean, it's, it's obvious that he's going to save Gotham, you know, overall, but just, you know, he will not kill someone. He, and, and this sort of, he, he will not break this, this moral code of his. I suppose that more or less covers it. The scene of Carmine Falcone in in the club, you know, talking talking about how I have so much power that I could kill you right now and nobody would bat an eye. Is, did anybody else get reminded of Sin City with you know Hardigan? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Again, like I said in the review, this is fairly Frank Miller-ish, even though I'm, I'm almost certain he didn't help write it. You know, it was Goyer and I think also Nolan himself, but yeah. They, they took inspiration from some Miller work. I suppose that about covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.